Thanks, Valentin. Uh, so my name is uh, Maria Mongio. I'm a Maria Maez II Fellow at the Institute, and I also work within the Gaia Group here at the Institute. So some of the, uh, what, what I'm basically trying to explain today is uh, some of the work I've been doing on different projects I'm involved in, which are heavily embedded in the, in the Gaia Group uh, of, the, of the Institute. So, well, as you know, in our group, one of our main topic of research is, uh, is our galaxy. Uh, that, as you know, we basically see uh, as a strip uh, in the sky. Uh, and this is obviously the most uh, interesting galaxy you can study because it's what we have the closest. But at the same time, we are in a weird view inside it that makes it very difficult sometimes to disentangle what's the structure, the shape, the kinematics, and so on. So a um, few years ago, uh, there's been a huge uh, move uh, forward uh, in the studies of the galaxy, basically thanks to Gaia. Gaia, as you know, is this ESA satellite that was launched in 2013. And since then, it has already revolutionized what we know about the, the Milky Way. So in previous uh, data releases, uh, we already have available uh, magnitudes and colors for over 1.5 billion stars, and also uh, five parameter astrometry. That basically means the, posi the very accurate positions in the sky, the parallaxes that will lead to uh, distances or uh, estimations of distances, and also the proper motions of how they move in the sky. And with that, we've already done a lot of work and a lot of uh, very interesting science. Um, more is to come. Uh, and as uh, Oscar just mentioned earlier, fresh from the oven, we know that the next Gaia re data release, this da data release three, is going to be uh, 13th of June. And what we will have from there, well, some of the uh, very interesting and new information that will be available in data release three uh, is in addition to all the, oops, uh, sorry. Uh, in addition to the, this uh, photometry, colors, and, uh, and uh, astrometry that was already available in previous releases, uh, we will also have things like uh, object classifications for around 500 million stars. We will also have uh, actual spectra from some, of, some objects, both in the uh, red and blue uh, photometric bands and also in the calcium triplet, this RBS uh, uh, Spec, uh, spec, uh, spectra that will also provide uh, radial velocities. So there will be already radial velocities for around 33 million stars uh, with, with some magnitude uh, cuts, so only for the brightest targets, and also with a cut in, in uh, effective temperature. So only uh, colder uh, stars, it will avoid some of the hotter objects so far. And uh, also uh, variability for st stars, so some solar system objects, non-single stars, quasars. So all, all, a lot of new information uh, will come. If you want more detail about any of this, uh, let us know. Um, so well, I, I really want to stress all the amount of work that the Gaia team here is doing to, to get all these things ready. So we are doing a lot of work in the preparation and the validation uh, of, of these catalogs. Uh, and, and this is uh, an amazing amount uh, data set that will help us to disentangle many of the key questions of, the, of our galaxy. However, there is always room for uh, improvement and there is some uh, niches here that will need to be filled through uh, more data, uh, in that case, uh, on ground uh, observations. And I want to um, mention a couple of them here today that I'm involved with. Um, one of these is uh, this uh, IGAPS uh, photometric survey. So obviously Gaia has only these this three bands uh, in photometry, but other bands will help us to have more information about the stars. And the other one is, is WIF. So basically, Gaia is getting radial velocities and spectra, but only for the brightest targets. Uh, so we need on-ground observations to get spectra for fainter targets. And also, since Gaia is observing the spectra in the calcium triplet, that means in the red bands, uh, blue stars will get less information here. So hence these uh, this, uh, spectroscopic surveys. So let me start with the, this IGAP survey. Uh, this is a photometric survey that, that is covering the northern galactic plane. Um, as you know, uh, basically that, that means that, that we're only observing half uh, of the, of the uh, plane of the galaxy, that the one that's visible from the northern hemisphere. And uh, this uh, has this, epa, sorry. Okay, still here. Okay. Uh, these bands here are these five uh, photometric bands. Um, I won't go into much detail, only mention that uh, the limiting magnitudes for this catalog reaches slightly deeper than Gaia. So basically, in general, it covers all, all the uh, um, 
same magnitude limits uh, than Gaia a bit, a bit deeper than that. So uh, without, uh, if, you, if you want more detail about any of this uh, information of this uh, survey, you can go into the paper. Just wanted to mention what's the photometric accuracies, uh, how good are these uh, photometers that we're obtaining here. In black, in this plot, you have for the different bands, uh, in black is the uh, nominal errors, the Poissonian errors that obviously go to uh, zero for very bright targets. And in red, you have actual very, a bit more real errors uh, obtained from uh, the uh, standard deviation of different measurements for each star. And that basically uh, um, tends to 0.02 for bright targets, except from some saturation issues and so on. But in general, it's a, it's a, a accurate enough catalog. And obviously, the errors uh, increase uh, uh, with magnitude. So I, I wanted to explain some of the science we have already started to do with this catalog, some applications that we've been um, using. One of them is that uh, it is very good to select emission line targets. Uh, we have these R minus H alpha versus R minus I diagrams. And usually, all the stars, uh, so these, these kind of B shapes here, indicate where the main sequence stars would lie an extinction moves stars in general like right on top from that. And so basically all the stars that lay above these lines here in, in gray in this plot, they are in general emission line stars. So this catalog contains a flag uh, that indicates uh, uh, emission. What else? We can also uh, study variability here because uh, we actually have two different measurements of the R band uh, and also the catalog includes a, a, a flag uh, of, of variability which when the differences in the two magnitudes are uh, above 0.2 magnitudes and uh, taking into account the errors like five sigma uh, this difference is above uh, five sigma times the, the errors in magnitudes so th there's around uh, 53,000 uh, of the around so there is around 300 million sources in the catalog and around 53,000 of them are classified as binaries already uh, what else have we done with iGAPS? Uh, well, we've also used the actual images, not just the catalog, but the, but the images. If you are interested in those, they are available in this web page up here, more details in this, in this paper. Uh, and what can we do with them? Well, basically, first of all, we can do very nice images. There are some uh, uh, nice images, especially with the H alpha band, which uh, 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 will show the, the uh, emission of, this, of these objects. Uh, but th they've been also being used to detect planetary nebula and emission line um, um, extended objects. And we are also using them to detect, to like point or select uh, targets for spectroscopic surveys. So we will put some of the uh, fibers of some of these spectroscopic survey in these uh, positions where we have emission in H alpha, including like planetary nebulae and, and stuff like that. So you can, well, I don't know if you can see it, but some of these small dots here and there will be used as, uh, we will get a spectra from them in the future. Um, what else? We've also been uh, selecting OB targets with that. We have some blue bands in these, um, in these objects. And basically, this is for this uh, U minus G versus G minus R uh, photometric diagrams. Here again, you can see the, the, the solid lines are more or less where the main sequence uh, would lie. And extinction moves things in that direction. So basically anything above this line, we know that it's gonna be something like a, a star from O to B3. So we are uh, able to select this O and early B targets from this kind of diagrams. And for that, we've, di we've, uh, we've done some of these um, studies with O stars, in that case, in the Carina region. So basically, if this is, uh, if th this would be a picture of our galaxy seen from the top, uh, the sun is somewhere like this, uh, so we are here, and this is the galactic center. And in that case, this Carina region basically is, tries to see the spiral arm, this spiral arm here. So basically, we are observing in this direction here. So we've done a, a, a catalog of all these stars in this region here. And in, in these two plots, we are uh, tracing uh, runaway stars. Mar, maybe you are interested in having a look at this paper. So basically, these are two known clusters. And the good thing of these large photometric surveys is that you can select things in a much wide, wider areas. I mean, in the past, when you wanted, wanted to analyze a cluster, you basically just went and, and observed something in, in a small area on the cluster. But here, we can go much, much wider. 
And what, what we've done here is to use uh, Gaia, Gaia proper motions and select and select all those always stars that the proper motion agrees with coming from these uh, these clusters. Uh, and so there are well interesting things like like some shapes that are not always completely round, some some directions that are more favored than others, or or some really really high uh, runaway uh, targets that uh, could be could be interested to to interesting to have a look at. Um, this is a slightly different thing in the same direction. So basically the same direction. This is a large uh, sample of OV stars in this in this Carina region. Uh, this is the galactic longitude. So basically uh, this axis here shows how far or how right or left are from this uh, central direction. And some of the things we've been studying here is like the general um, distances, uh, the general kinematics of the region. We do have estimation of distances here, but this is quite bad. So the Gaia parallaxes do not provide yet uh, good distances in this region because we are in, in the range of four to 10 kiloparsecs. And so just to set an example, this kind of stronger line here, this is an over density is, problem, is due to a cluster. So all these stars here are in the same location and still the, uh, the est distance estimation uh, gives like between five and nine uh, kiloparsecs. So distances here are not very reliable, but still what it is uh, very uh, reliable are proper motions. So this is the proper motion in B, basically how stars move uh, up or down from the galactic disk. And this is, uh, the lines here show models of uh, circular rotation. So if stars move exactly uh, circular um, around the galactic center, they would follow this. And, and we see that the vertical, in, in the vertical case, Differences with zero basically depends on the uh, solar motion as well. So basically, in the B, we don't see anything too, uh, too, um, too different of what we expected. But we do if we check the uh, proper motion in, in L, so in, in the galactic rotation, in the sorry, in the galactic plane. And in that case, we see com like different strips, which is at this point a bit difficult to know if it is due to um, to the fact that these different structures at different distances, or uh, or it's really uh, something about the deformation uh, of this of this object, or the formation of this region that creates these irregularities or these patterns. Uh, it's in interesting also to see that uh, another author saw something similar, this kind of strips here, in the uh, in single region, a completely different region, and they also saw these these patterns. In any case, we still lack radial velocities here. So we need radial velocities to complete the, 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 whole, the, the, the picture and, and see if, if what happens when, well, let's see, when, when we add the third, the sixth component um, in, this, in this study. Um, and we, uh, Gaia, since it's, this is blue targets and they are quite faint, might not provide uh, good information for radial, radial velocities here, which will come in a second. But first, I wanted to mention that using IGAPS, we can also select B, A, um, A and uh, late B and early A type of stars. And this comes again from this diagram you've seen before that was useful to select uh, emission line stars. Uh, and so, as I said before, this is the main sequence. And it does like kind of a peak down here. And here is where A, early A stars lay. So basically, since the extinction moves in this way, if we select stars down here, they will mainly be this, uh, this uh, early, late B, early A stars. And there's, we've done a lot of work with this A star so far. This, for example, is the uh, PhD thesis of Amy Harris. And, and she used uh, also spectra. So she selected A stars using uh, this photometry. And then she, uses, she used spec spectra in two directions. In that case, one in the anti-center direction and another one in this direction in the second quadrant here. And she studied the, uh, the velocity, the kinematics uh, of these stars in, this, in these two directions. This basically is um, the, the uh, U component, so basically uh, how uh, the stars move, uh, um, uh, so how they got farther or closer to the galactic center, so this radial Observation, we would expect something very close to zero for uh, exact uh, circular rotation, but obviously there are a lot of patterns, waves, uh, they decrease here and so on. So 
it's not, uh, we already know that galaxy is not something very um, stable and, and, and not everything moves in circular, in, uh, in circular uh, rotation. So there are lots of things to try to disentangle why it is, if it is uh, external perturbations, if it is um, uh, well, different kind of things that will help us to model uh, the Milky Way. Uh, this is uh, the circular rotation in that case. So, uh, and again, we would expect something flat, which is uh, not, uh, and, and this is the vertical motion from the galaxy that, again, it has several waves and, and perturbations. Um, what else? Uh, and, and also using uh, these BA stars, this is the work that uh, Judith Ardebol is starting to do uh, for, his, for her master thesis, and she's been uh, analyzing the structure of the Milky Way. Sorry, because here I kind of turned a bit the, the axis. So basically, now the sun is here in the center, and this is uh, the, the galactic center. So basically, this is the structure as seen through BA stars in the second and third galactic quadrants. Um, and obviously, well, this is just the, the over densities, and this is the over density, but, but uh, run through some kernels that help to uh, highlight uh, some of the structures. Uh, and obviously, as you go further away, things are more difficult to see. And there are so these uh, radial structures that are both either due to uh, errors in, in, in distance, but also uh, due to some extinction that might be blocking. If you have an extinction cloud here, might be blocking uh, some of the views. Um, but if you go to the closer uh, distance, you can already start to see some structure here that, uh, that can be directly linked to things like spiral arms. Uh, or so on. Um, so as I've mentioned, some of the, uh, well, uh, and let me also say that uh, some of the next phase here is to start to work with the kinematics of all these targets to have a, a wider um, view of the, of the kinematics of the galaxy as seen through these uh, A stars. Um, as, as you can see, there is only like half of the galaxy here because this is a northern, uh, a northern uh, survey. But we already have observed this uh, BIFAS uh, survey, which is the southern quarter part that will uh, like complete the whole picture here. Uh, this is already observed, and, and we are uh, in the phases of uh, finishing the calibrations uh, in order to be able to complete this, this work as well. Uh, so when working with kinematics, again, I mentioned that before, we are missing radial velocities. Gaia will provide some radial velocities, but only for bright targets. and more in the red part. So uh, one of the things we are missing is uh, more spectrum, more radial velocities for deeper objects. And here is where WIF comes in. WIF is a multi-object spectrograph uh, that uh, is already being uh, installed in the William Herschel in La Palma. Um, some of the main characteristics, I, I won't go into full detail, but basically you can uh, allocate almost 1,000 fibers in a field uh, of uh, two degree diameter. So it's a really a, a monster. Um, and, and it will provide both low and high resolution uh, capabilities. This is, as I said, already been uh, being installed and there are you know, all the last minute technical issues going up and down. Uh, the current uh, ex estimation is that we'll start getting uh, spectra like by mid 2022, so we are almost there. Uh, and this is a consortium of different uh, uh, countries here, yes, including Spain. So if you are interested in any of this, uh, you can get involved. Uh, there will be a five-year survey of different surveys that have already been prepared and, and they are already defined. But there will also be like 30% uh, of the time that will be open time. So any of you can go and apply for, for with time as well. Um, this is just a list of the uh, surveys that are already prepared uh, and, uh, and we are heavily involved in all the observing preparations. Uh, the, the most interesting for us are, are this uh, uh, galactic archaeology survey, uh, which basically is this, this Gaia extension uh, that we were mentioning before, and also this uh, stellar uh, component, which will also include spectra for O, B, I, uh, M, A type, type stars. And then there is also some uh, extragalactic stuff, um, extragalactic surveys, including galaxy cluster, quasars, uh, and some um, uh, like, uh, follow-up observations of low far and so on. There is a large number of uh, us here in the Institute working with. Uh, let me stress, like uh, Teresa, Mar Marcel, and myself, we're heavily involved 
in the, in the definition, in the preparations uh, of the survey, but you have a long list here of people involved in, in WIF. So if you have questions or want to know more details about that, let us know. Um, and I think I will just finish here and take questions if, if any. Thank you, Maria. So it is time for questions. Uh, when you saw the the runaway stars, uh, could you tell me which distances and and the uh, range of secular velocity do they have? Yeah, so so we have a very rough estimation of the of the distances because, well, as I said, the individual distances are very difficult to obtain here because because they are very far and, and parallaxes are not very good. But since some of these are clusters, we do have better estimations of, of, the, of these distances for, for the clusters. Uh, so yeah, uh, we have uh, computer estimations of the, uh, uh, of the actual velocities, like not proper motions, but actual velocities. Uh, so there are some estimations of that in the, in the paper. Uh, we can discuss about that if you want. OK, there is time for more questions. Yeah, you talk about uh, emission line stars. Um, how many do you expect to detect uh, uh, regarding these stars? And um, uh, so there is a database of these stars containing around uh, 2,500 objects, more or less. And uh, will you be able to contribute to that, or what are the numbers, more or less? So so far in this in this work, we've only like flagged emission line stars, and it's very difficult for us to. Uh, really say more about that uh, just from the photometry uh, in WIF, in this within this skip uh, uh, survey we do have a a, a, a sub -sur or, or sub uh, selection devoted to emission line stars and we will try to observe some of those and, and see well at least we have a you know a, a small subsample but will give us like mm, mm, fraction of how many of each type and, and stuff like that so uh, we for variability. So yeah, we, we do expect to observe some of those in, in, in WIF. We'll see what we get from that. Okay, there is time for one more question. If not, let's uh, thank Maria again and all the speakers of the morning and let's reconvene at uh, half past two. <laughs>